Trainer Ruben Lerner here with another question from Brett, who recently read my book, Python Workout. I'm even wearing my Python Workout shirt today. And he writes that the dot notation when we're working with objects is used to apply a method to a particular object or to rechange the name of an attribute or value of an attribute. My understanding is that we use a method by writing the object name dot and the method name. Is that correct? Can we use a method simply by typing the dot and the method's name, as in like dot method name, without the object dot method name? So the short answer is no. But let's do a longer answer and understand what's going on and why it works the way it works. When I say here class person, def in it, self name. Let's do this. Self name equals name. And I'm gonna say def greet self return hello self.name. All right, so I've now created a new class, a new data type, and this class has two methods. The first method is dunder init. That's what is executed when a new instance, when a new object of type person is created just before it's returned to us. And what we're doing inside of dunder init is adding a new attribute to that object. I'm gonna to get to those attributes in a moment. We also have a method greet, which when we invoke it, returns a nice greeting. So if I say p equals person Ruben, and now I say p dot, well, p dot name is going to be Ruben, and p dot greet is invoking the method. So this is what we do. But Brett here is trying to understand why does it work this way? And if I want to run the greet method, can I just say dot greet? So as I said before, the short answer is no. If you do this, it's just not going to work. This is invalid Python syntax. But what's actually happening? So first of all, we have to distinguish between two ways in which we can refer to objects in Python. We have a whole lot of objects there um, defined in Python, and we get to them typically via names that refer to them. What are those names? Well, there are two different types of names. There are variables and there are attributes. And while we often mix these up, they're actually quite different from one another. P here is a variable. It's a global variable. It's a name in the global namespace that's available to me basically everywhere within Python. And when I say P, Python says, oh, I see, you wanna look at P, I'm gonna look in local, enclosing, global buildings, I found it in globals, fantastic, I found the object it refers to, let's go on. But name is not a variable, name is an attribute. It's an attribute that belongs to P, and you can think of attributes as privately owned dictionaries, or all the attributes belonging to an object are part of its privately owned dictionary. That p.name, well, name, you could think of it as the name, yeah, doubly so, and then it has a value. The value is Ruben. And so you can have as many attributes as you want on an object, and they really are stored in something akin to a private dictionary. In fact, behind the scenes, it basically is a dictionary. So if I want to get to name, there's no such thing as name floating around in the global namespace. There is only name relative to p because it's part of its private dictionary. If I then say, you know, uh, someone else, oops, someone else equals person, and let's say else, that's a great first name, right? All right, so now I can say someone else, name, dot name is else, and someone else, dot greet, and it'll say, hello, else. <laughs> they really should have chosen, it's not, it's really should have chosen a different name, but that's a different issue. So what you see is that when I call dot greet on someone else, I get a different response. So there's no such thing as greet. There's greet the method invoked on P and there's greet the method invoked on someone else. Now I'm papering over the fact that actually it gets to this method. It's actually gonna run this code. And the difference between them is self. The difference between them is the instance where the data is stored. So what's really happening, really and truly happening is that Python says, hey, someone else, you object, do you have an attribute named greet? And it says, no, I don't. It's not part of my private dictionary. And thus what happens, it looks on the class and it does find greet there and it calls greet with self. So the first question he asks is, can we, or the question basically, the last question even in the sentence is, can we just call it with the dot? And the answer is no, as we saw before, but now you understand why, because this means I am an attribute and attributes must belong to an object. And if I don't indicate what object it belongs to, then Python doesn't even know where to start searching. So that's not possible. We've always got to give it an object. That said, I can say person.greet of p, and that will work correctly. And that's because when I say p.greet, this is transformed into person.greet of p, right? Python does this little switcheroo behind the scenes where it takes your instance and moves it to be the first argument. And then it takes the class 
and calls the attribute, you know, uses the attribute from the class. So when you say p.greet, it's really being rewritten to person.greet, and that's because methods are actually part of the class's attributes, the class's private dictionary, and not part of the instances. That's part of that whole lookup system, what I call ICPO. We first look on the instance, then on the class, then on the parents, and then on object, the top of our entire object hierarchy. So dots always mean attributes. Dots mean that you gotta have something before the dot, otherwise we don't know who it belongs to. And they can either be methods, in which case they're invoked with parentheses, or they can be data, in which case they aren't used with parentheses. Okay, um, one last thing that Brett asks here, he, where he talks about, we use the dot notation to apply a method to a particular object or to read change the name of an attribute. That is 100% true, but there is actually another way to do it in Python, a sort of sneaky way, the generic way. So if I say uh, p.name, what am I doing? I'm saying, hey p, do you have an attribute named name? It says yes. I say, give me your value. And that's why I get back, I get back Ruben. I can also say get adder. This is a function in built-ins in the default namespace that we always look at if all else goes wrong or if we can't find it elsewhere. This is where a lot of, uh, well, built-in things in Python are defined, whether it's list or stir or some. So I can say get adder of p comma, the string name, and what do you know? It invokes that. These are equivalent, p.name and getAdder pname. Notice though that here, name is a string. And that's how it all sort of comes together. If I say dir of p, I'm gonna get all the attributes as strings, and then I can sort of use them in getAdder. And just as there's a getAdder, there's also a setAdder for p, and we can say here name, and we can say new name. And now, if I do p.name, we'll see that it has been changed to new name. Very exciting. I can even go so far as to say del adder p name, and this will remove that attribute. It'll take it out of that private dictionary there. And there's no harm done until I say p.greet. And then what's going to happen? Well, Python is going to ask p, do you have an attribute named greet? The answer is no. So it asks this class, the person class, do you have an attribute named greet? And the answer is yes. So we get that method back. We do the little switcheroo, where now it becomes person.greet on p. And we run the method, and in the method it says, okay, I'm now going to get self.name. I'm going to ask p for its value of name. But I just got rid of name, so what are we going to get? That's right, we're going to get an error here, an attribute error. So don't do that. All right, I hope that answers Brett's question. I hope that answers questions you have. If you have questions to ask me about Python, please don't hesitate to send them in. I love answering them. I love getting questions. I love getting mail. And I will answer them as soon as I can on this channel. See you soon.